Hey everyone, I am back. I know it's daytime, nah, and I normally do my videos at night, but lately I've been falling asleep early for me, so I need to make something straighten out, like a schedule or something for my videos, so I don't randomly post. Although sometimes I like randomly posting, so until then I'm going to be posting whenever I feel like it, and whenever I get information for another place that I need. And with that being said, um, I hope you guys had a happy new year, and Merry Christmas, or Happy Holidays, and yeah, let's continue our Savannah tour. Ripley Street is the place to be in Savannah. Shops, restaurants, and boutiques. Line, line the street, line the old common stone street. But if we go back a few hundred years, you'll find out that it was a very different thing. Be prepared to be scared. African American slaves being shuffled into the stone tunnels to the stone to the sold on factor walks. Slaves and immigrant workers rightly their racks and to load up load up in the inland cargo tent with cotton with cotton. These drunks and lower lines hanging around the alley and waiting for the next victim. The same building served as a warehouse to store cotton and slaves are now hotels, cafes, and offices. Among them on the, is the Old Harbor Inn, one of the oldest hotels in Savannah's historic district. The building was originally used as a dock China warehouse before it being demolished and rebuilt as the headquarters of an oil company. The building was seriously caught fire in 1892, and many suspect that the blaze was, was the work of a disgruntled employee named Hank. He perished in the fire, but his spirit resides in the building to this day. The building was rebuilt re shortly afterward, and housed a clothing factory until the late 80s, when it was re Rebranded as a luxury hotel named the Old Harbor Inn. Hank Spirit still lives in the inn today, and he is known to be quite the prankster. He has been blamed for missing personal belongings, random objects flying around the room, and alarm clocks going off in the early morning. One day he'll even get into bed and take a nap alongside you. The kids and staff also start to some of Hank's rats. Once at the Old Harbor Inn restaurant, claimed that he turned off an unplugged appliance during the busy hour. Entire entry plates of food have gone missing. Turns out that oh, mm, that spring is quite the booty. Ripper Street is, na is nice now, but it, it was a bad place in the 1800s. Like many court pennies, the dogs are in crime infection, alcoholism, C3, pickpocketing, and brawls were common. The dogs are the dogs bought in flames and exported cotton. The things that were recently taken from Africa were arrived in Dove in the Rome and were shuffled into a warehouse and alleyways before being called to fat. Factor walk. Many died of malnourishment, disease, and heat stroke. Some of his names were part to work on the dock alongside Harmon and Iris and McBurn, many of whom were in in her in the her turban. Many died while working and were either caught caught under a weight of massive mouths of cotton or were were worked to death until coming to a hospital. The warehouse with Mine River Street were used to import cotton and things before and after we take cotton distance. Many of the buildings still have the metal mat 
who went nothing for war attack. Old Harbor Inn site was first constructed in 1812. The Nintonson and Jones family. The buildings were used as stores until about 1890, when the buildings were demolished to make way for me mega warehouses. The new three-story building was served as a primary headquarters for the Tide Water Oil Company. As the norm, as the norm at the time, excuse me. As was normal at the time, the buildings were made of wood. It was cheap and easy and an easy price for building material, but the threat of fire was always looming. This is worth the small. It was only a matter of time. In 1892, two years after the building was constructed, a fire broke out in, on the east of the Fertner's Law. The storm breeze helped the fire spread. Within minutes, the entire city was not in, was rounded into a massive inferno. It didn't help that 500 barrels of oil were being stored inside the building at the time. Try as they could, firefighters couldn't put out the fire. It had grown too big. By the time the fire subsided, the building was completely destroyed. The fire was one of the many, was many in Savannah, and so city leaders passed on Aryan audiences that require all new buildings to be made out of brick. The warehouse was rebuilt, requiring over 700,000 bricks to complete it. Not only was the warehouse not staying resistant, but the building was reserved as a marvel of construction at the time. Shortly after, the Rockefeller Oil Trust took over Tidewater water and moved into a building occupying until 1907. They were known for selling high grade of kerosene, but they called it Guardian Oil. The building then, then served as a demi factory manufacturing blue heat and oil and overall for Alex Penner Brunner. Company until 1980. While the Savannah Historic District was undergoing massive renovations, AOC Hotel Front named property and began renovating in 1985. The Old Homer Inn opened for business in 1987, and today is the primary, premier luxury hotel in Savannah's Riverfront. Front. The end is known in for being a few pet, for being one of the few pet friendly hotels in the city and the eve, and in the evening. They deliver free ice cream straight to your doorstep. Mom, if you're watching, if you're going to be watching this video, we might want to write that down. The resident growth of the old former Inn is, is a mysterious spirit named Hank. Nobody knows who Hank was in life, but they do have a hunt. Approximately, Hank was the only capone of the fire in 1892. Not only was he killed in the fire, some say he accidentally actually started the fire. The police started near his office and Hank had gotten into a nasty argument with his bosses earlier in the day. Many suspect that he started the fire in an ill fated attempt at, at revenge. No no child police were actually reported. Many believe that he actually that he was actually the only fatality of the blame. Fatality. When the ghost began to appear after the building was rebuilt, nobody knew who he was. Oh, so they affectionately named him Hank. Affectionately named him Hank. Apparently, I cannot read it anymore. Today, Hank is well known amongst the past and past of the old former inn, despite the hotel prohibiting smoking indoors, and some may say they smell an aroma of cigar smoke 
my nun, my half, not my half parent apparent. And many reports say a mysterious man smoking a cigar around the hotel. He is known for moving things around when it was hard to me, and throwing coins around the room randomly in an attempt to scoop the back. Hank is also known to overstep his boundaries and attempt with the lady. He knows that, he knows that, have claimed to await with an hour after, after an overstrained man appearing in the room and causing up to them in med. And that's a little concerning. Upon waking up and startled and feeling violated, they find no money there. That is definitely concerning. Maybe not in this hotel. Not alone. Pink seems to appear mostly in room 405 to 406. No money knows why he chooses his niece rooms in particular. But he seems to like me the most. Jeff encouraged Nick to look for, for a girl to book either of these rooms to raise chances of encountering a mysterious note. One staff member ended up spending the night in room 405. After a late night shift, he heard strange mailing noises against the wall and sounds like someone entering the doorknob. The alarm clock in the next room went off in the middle of the night, and he knew that, that the room hadn't been booked in weeks. Hank was clearly trying to get her, but as an extended, experienced staff member, they brushed it off and slept through the night. He had long, he had long, long grown accustomed to Hank's arms. Thank you for watching my panel and video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, I'm Hot Girl, and this is my channel. I'll scoop you later. Until next time, pleasant dreams.